In this video, we're going to take a look at how to determine the number of triangles you can form when given information about a side side angle triangle. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example. So in this first example, we're given the triangle XYZ. We're told that angle X is 40 degrees, side X is 7, and side Z is 5. So we know that in order to use a uh, the law of sines, we need an angle side pair, which we have here. And since we're given information about side Z, we want to find the measure of angle Z first. So to isolate Z here, we need to multiply both sides by 5 and then take the inverse sine. So we're going to have inverse sine of 5 times the sine of 40 degrees. All of this divided by 7. So then we can go ahead and plug this into our calculator. So if you go to your calculator, uh, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you're in degree mode. So go ahead and change your calculator into degree mode. And then throw the whole thing in. This whole thing, we want to throw that whole thing into our calculator. Um, so we're going to go inverse sine of 5 times the sine of 40, all divided by 7. Hit enter. And it will tell us that this is equal to 27.3 degrees. So the measure of angle Z is 27.3 degrees. Now, if we were going to um, find angle Y, we can just add 40 and 27, subtract from 180, and that would give us the other measure for Y. But what if there was another possible triangle? How would we know? So in order for uh, there to be another triangle, what would have to happen is we'd have to find some measure of Z prime. Let's call it Z prime. Uh, and Z prime would have to be the supplement of 27.3 uh, degrees. Now, the reason why it would be the supplement is if you remember about the definition of inverse sine. So the inverse sine is defined in quadrants uh, one and four, but all the measures in angle f in quadrant four are negative angles. So that means that the only way that we're ever going to get an output of a positive measure is if we're given an angle measure in the first quadrant. But the sine, the sine function, not the inverse sine function, the sine function is positive in quadrants one and two. So we are basically neglecting any possible output of a angle in quadrant two, which means if we were potentially to get an obtuse measure, we wouldn't know it because of the way that the inverse sine is defined. So the way that we would find the obtuse angle or the angle in the second quadrant that would have the same y value as sine, because remember sine represents y, um, is it would just be the supplement. So if we're looking at the y values, whatever the angle 27.3, the angle that would be reflected about it would just be 180 minus 27.3. So to find Z prime, it's essentially just that. It's its supplement. So 180 minus 27.3 degrees. So what is that? Uh, that's 152.7 degrees. So if, if there was going to be another triangle, the measure of angle Z would be 152.7 degrees. Now, is that a valid or possible measure? Um, so the way that we check that is we take the supplement, Z prime, and we can add it to our original angle that's fixed and not changing. And if I add Z prime to the measure of angle X, what would I get? 152.7 plus 40. So this is 192.7 degrees. Now, why do I want to do that? Well, by adding these two angles, I'm essentially going to be using this information to try and find the third angle in my triangle. Now, we know that in order for a triangle to exist, the sum of the three angles has to be 180 degrees. 192 is already bigger than 180. So with just two of our angles, we've already surpassed the total sum that is allowed in a triangle, which means that this 152 degrees is not a valid measure for this information. It's already too big. It would already eclipse the total sum that would be allowed to get another triangle. So that means that there is not two triangles uh, in this, this information gives us only one triangle. So let's take a look at another example. So in this example, we're given 
Uh, PQR, we're told that angle P is 65 degrees, side P is 4, and side R is 6.5. So again, we have this angle side pair, and we're going to be looking for angle R. So just like we did in the last one, to find angle R, we're going to multiply by 6.5 and take the inverse sine. So inverse sine of 6.5 times the sine of six point, uh, sorry, of 65 degrees, all divided by four. So we can go ahead and throw this into our calculator. So inverse sine of 6.5 times the sine of 65 degrees, all of this divided by four, hit enter, and it says domain error. So what's the problem here? So let's take a look at where the problem occurs. So if we delete the inverse sign and we just look at the argument, right? So we're just looking at this part here. What is the value of the argument? Well, this portion, the argument of our uh, sine function, our inverse sine function is 1.4727, right? Now, if you think about the sine value, the sine function, the sine function has outputs between negative one and one. And if you remember, if you recall in, uh, when talking about inverses, the inverse, the outputs of the original function become the inputs of the inverse. So if the outputs are restricted to be between negative one and one for the sine function, that means that the inputs for the inverse have to be between negative one and one. This here, 1.4728, that's outside of this value here. So that means it does not, uh, it gives us a domain error, which means that this information here actually cannot work for a triangle. We'd have no triangle. Okay. So let's look at another situation. So in this situation, we have um, angle D is 50 degrees, side D is 6, side E is 7.5. So again, we want to find the measure of angle E. So to do that again, just like we did, multiply by 7.5 and take the inverse sine. So inverse sine of 7.5 times the sine of 50 degrees, all divided by 6. Go ahead and throw this into your calculator so we can clear this off. So inverse sine of 7.5 times the sine of 50 degrees divided by 6. And we get that this is, uh, what, whoop, sorry about that. We get that this is about 73.2 degrees. Okay, so we're gonna do that same trick that we did before. So this is 73.2 degrees. Or if we're thinking about E prime, um, man, if we're thinking about E prime, what is E prime? E prime would be the supplement of this, 180 minus 73.2 degrees. So that would be 106.8 degrees. Now, in order for us to check if there's going to be, um, we know that there's one triangle because we got a valid solution at least. Uh, in order for us to check if there's another, we have to add E prime to the original angle we were given. So what is the measure of angle D plus the measure of E prime? So 50 plus 106.8 degrees. That's 156.8 degrees, which is less than 180, which means there's still some room for a third angle. So because there's still room for a third angle, that means that this here, E prime, is in fact a valid potential solution to this triangle. So we could have E being 73.2 degrees, or it could be 106.8 degrees. So there's two possible solutions, which means this is a two triangle situation. I'm not gonna go through the process of actually doing all the solving. We've talked about that in previous videos, but I just wanted to show you another way to approach determining whether there's uh, zero, one, or two triangles.